Hi everyone! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to assemble this fluoro tea light holder. Here's a Thanksgiving table centerpiece I put together. Even if you don't have a centerpiece, you could sprinkle these around a buffet table or place them at each place setting in place of name cards. And of course, these aren't exclusive to Thanksgiving or fall. Here's some I made in spring colors that would look cute at a garden party or a woodland party. And look at how minimal and simple these look without the flowers. I made these in white and just love them like this. You can use these in a winter or Christmas setting or add them to a bridal shower table. Okay, let's move on to how to assemble these tea light holders. The tea lights I use are about one and a half inches in diameter, but these holders will hold a tea light up to two inches in diameter. So hopefully that covers all the different tea lights that you're using. Here is what you will see when you open your downloaded folder. The tea light holder itself is made up of these two parts here. And then you have the flower which has five parts to it. There are three petal sizes and two pieces for the flower center. And the next thing I want to discuss is notice the red dotted lines here versus the black solid lines. The red dotted lines are fold lines and the black solid lines are cut lines. If you're using design space for your machine, the red dotted lines will probably import from your SVG file as solid cut lines. So before cutting, you'll need to select these lines and change them from basic cut lines to score lines. If you find you aren't able to select them individually, you may need to ungroup the whole object first. And let's move on to assembly, but before we assemble, let me just show you how the parts will come together. Here are the two parts to the box holder. This piece with the hexagon attached to it will go under the second piece like this and place that bottom piece so that the hexagon is to your left. The reason this matters is because on both pieces, you'll notice these fold lines, which are at the same spot on both pieces. However, the branches should not be at the same spot on the two pieces. On this piece, the branch sits towards the left side of each of the panels between the fold lines. But on this piece, the branches sit towards the right side of each panel. So make sure that when you attach the top piece, the branches are staggered like this. If you flip this piece and put it on top, the branches will match almost exactly on top of each other, and we don't want this. We want those branches to be spread out and alternate like this. Now let's assemble them. For this project, I'll be using this tacky glue, which is thicker and dries faster than white glue. You can find a link to this glue in my description below. To start, spread some glue on the panels between the fold lines. Make sure your glue stays within that rectangle between the fold lines. The reason I'm avoiding spreading glue on the fold lines is because the glue does harden when it dries and you want to keep that area flexible. And once you've covered all the panels with glue, take your top piece and attach it on top. Make sure to line up that first edge with the cut line on the bottom piece. Then make sure the rest of that piece is in alignment with the bottom piece and press down. Let this dry for at least 10 minutes before the next step. Once you've allowed your glue to dry, fold down all fold lines, down and away from you like this. and just slightly open up that slit at the tab. Now also fold between each panel. Once you have those folded, wrap those panels around the hexagon like this and tuck in these flaps as you go around.
So when you get to the end panel, spread open the branches so you can get a better grip and tuck that last flap into the slit. You can get better access into that slit by opening it up a bit with your finger. Pull that tab on the inside all the way through, then you can fold it back to make sure it stays secure. Or you can also glue it down if you want a more permanent hold. And now spread open each branch. For each branch, open it at an angle like this to get them to fill the spaces better. And there we have the base of our tea light holder. At this point, you can leave it as is. This is how I made these white ones here that I showed you earlier. Now let's look at how we add the flowers. So obviously you can use any of the petals that I provide in any combination. For my flowers like this one here, I'm using two large petals and one each of the medium and small petals. Then I'm using both center pieces. To start, place a dab of glue in the center of one of your large petals. Then using an X-Acto knife works really well for this because you can just pick them up like this. Take the second large petal and place it on top, staggering it so that its petals are in between the petals below. Then place another dab of glue in the center and place the medium sized petal down and you're staggering it also with the petals below. And finally, do the same with your smallest petals. And for your centers, glue on the large center first, then the small center. And that's it. Now repeat with all your flowers. The quickest way to make these is to lay them all out and work one layer at a time on all the flowers you plan to make. I'll be adding nine flowers to my holder. I've already made one, so here I've laid out eight more to work on. And once you have all your flowers assembled, allow them to dry for about 10 minutes. The next step is to give these flowers a little dimension. And to do this, you just lift each petal up one by one, layer by layer. Work your way around until all the petals are popped up. Here you can see the subtle difference it makes. And finally, we glue the flowers onto the tea light holder. Now for this step, the tacky glue comes in handy because it's sticky and dries quick so the flowers stay in place immediately. If you're using white glue, your flowers may slide down the branch a bit, so to avoid this, you can squeeze out your white glue onto a container and then just let it dry for a few minutes before using it. This will turn your white glue into a more tacky glue like the one I'm using, so your flowers will stay in place. As you can see, I'm just going around the branches, gluing my flowers on at regular intervals.
And that's it, our tea light holder is done. I'm using this tea light that looks more like a small candle and I think these are much prettier than the regular tea lights. I'll include a link below to the Amazon link for these tea lights. Thank you so much for following along with this video. I hope you enjoyed making your tea light holder and I hope they serve you well at whatever event you use them for. Thanks everyone.